Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I'm going to be talking about all those animals that we had on the show. If you're enjoying these, please do like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when I post a new one. So the animals. We certainly had a lot of animals come through the show and some were around for more than one episode, like uh, the mule and Reckless, Rover the Peacock, and so certain animals were around and then others just appeared for a single episode. Blue the Mule was around for pretty much the entire series. Just about everybody rode the mule at some point, except I think Mama, Daddy, and Grandma. But even Grandpa got on Blue every once in a while. Uh, and I remember riding him and uh, the boys, the girls, sometimes a couple of us would ride together. We always rode bareback, except there was one episode, The Thoroughbred, where John Boy's going to enter Blue in a race. That is mules and, and horses. And there's, I guess, a family tradition of Waltons having competed in that race over the years. It's, you know, it's a local just a little local fun race. And I guess Grandpa won it a couple times and John Boy is hoping to put his name back on the cup in the Walton name. So to do that, he decides he is going to use a saddle on Blue. I, I guess when Grandpa rode him, he didn't ride him with a saddle or something. And it's also pretty interesting that Grandpa talks about having also ridden Blue in that race, which was quite some years ago. So this mule is no spring chicken anymore, if those timelines are to be believed. But then again, as many of you have pointed out, the timelines on the Waltons were a little fluid at times. I think because we were not the type of show that, like so many shows today, that just continue forward, and it is if one, one episode rolls into the next. We were sort of standalone episodes but there were certainly storylines that carried over arcs. But we did jump around at times and we definitely took a lot of license with timelines. So at that point in time, people didn't tend to watch shows over and over and over again, season after season. So I think those things probably weren't as obvious if you only saw a show once or twice. But now, because we can all go back and watch them over and over, those things tend to stand out more. But Back to John Boy riding Blue in the race. So he wanted to ride Blue with a saddle. And there was a scene where Blue is supposed to be quite startled and, and whether it's frightened or what it is, he doesn't want this saddle anywhere near him. So the Wranglers, we always had animal Wranglers whenever we used animals and they, there were uh, people who trained the animals, and then sometimes that was the person who brought the animal to the set. Sometimes it may not have been, but there was always somebody responsible for that animal when it was on the set. And so this particular trainer knew that there was only one thing that this mule was afraid of, and that was a camel. So they literally brought a camel to the studio, and they hid it behind the barn, and they brought in Blue and, and set up the whole shot and everything. And just at the point when John Boy brings that saddle out and starts to approach Blue with it, they brought the camel out. And that's where you see right here where Blue just, his eyes get big and his ears go forward and he spins and he takes off. I don't remember if we had to do more than one take, but if he was afraid of a camel, chances are he was going to be afraid of a camel the next time he saw it, but he might have been a little more leery of coming in and probably would have been looking for that camel at that point. So a little, a little piece of behind the scenes about Blue being afraid of a camel and fascinating to me how, I don't know how they figured that out. How did they know that that's what he was afraid of? <laughs> we had one director in particular, Harry Harris, who seemed to get tagged to do a lot of the episodes with animals. He maybe he had a history of being good directing animals and children, obviously, a lot of children he had to deal with as well. But what I loved about Harry Harris was he would tend to grumble about things, particularly about the animals, and yet he always got through it and did so with 
with success, I remember in particular, there seemed to be something about chickens because I remember no, numerous times Harry saying, what are we gonna do about the chickens? It was kind of a catchphrase. I know in the episode, The Vigil, you see grandma feeding chickens and there's other episodes where you see the chickens. And I think sometimes there were problems with the chickens because they were making noise or they were trying to fly out of the chicken coop or different things like that. So, but they were there a lot of the time. They were one of those animals that just was kind of part of the show. But clearly Harry had had some trouble with the chickens either doing what they were supposed to do or not doing something or doing something they weren't supposed to be doing. So what are we gonna do about those chickens was, was kind of something that I found synonymous with Harry Harris. And at one point, Mary McDonough and I took a cruise to the Caribbean between seasons. And one of the islands we went to was Grenada. We took a bit of a sort of taxi ride tour of the island. There was a point where on the side of the road, there were just chickens. And I literally had them stop and I got out and I took pictures of the chickens and I took them back to Harry. It was like this moment in Grenada with the chickens. So, and Harry Harris came right to mind. So we took that back and shared it with him and he got a kick out of that. A lot of different animals appeared in one episode. The fawn with, uh, with Aaron, Aaron and the fawn, or, um, that she named Lance, of course, you know, perfect name for a fawn. I don't know. Anyway, we had, fox we had a raccoon in the boy from the ccc we you know we talked about frogs and there was a bunny and there were squirrels and uh there was the bear in the hunt that that attacks john and the john boy shoots reckless of course reckless was around for most of the series as many of you had noted originally reckless was a boy and i believe that that original dog passed away. So they had another trained dog that looked a lot like Reckless that they brought in to replace the original Reckless that was a girl because there was an episode where now all of a sudden Reckless was going to have puppies. So I've been asked about that, about the change of gender of Reckless and unfortunately just the loss of an animal. We also had pigs, there was an episode where I believe Ben enters a greased pig contest. And then there was Jabez the pig that Elizabeth uh, uses for her 4-H project. There was the owl in the children's carol. There were um, there was Calico the cat that had kittens and, and then died. I was amazed when I started looking into the animals on the show, how many different animals appeared in the show. Rover. Rover first appeared in, I believe, the episode The Baptism, and then Rover decided in the story that he liked Jim Bob and was going to stay. I've been asked how come the, the peacock only appeared in a few episodes. My speculation? He's loud! And I think it's I don't know how you train a peacock. I don't know how they got the peacock to fly up into the treehouse and stay there. Maybe it's like training falcons or something like that, but I don't have an idea. But I do know that when he decides to be noisy, very noisy and very disruptive to filming. So I have a feeling that's why, unless Rover had a specific storyline, that he did not just generally appear in all episodes, unlike Blue or Chance the Cow. Cows are pretty benign, so they weren't really noisy, didn't cause a lot of trouble. We had the calf. We had, I mean, I could go on and on, but they were definitely a huge part of the Waltons. And then you had Yancey Tucker, who had all those animals that lived in his cabin with him. So lots, lots of different opportunities. Uh, in the carnival, the monkey, cute little thing. I didn't get to work with it, but it sure was adorable. Or, um, ah, all the horses. Uh, of course, later in the series, I had a horse. We did the horse race with the wager. Uh, we had the, the, the horse in the thoroughbred. And the horses usually were pretty, pretty easy to work with. You know, we ne were never really asking them to do something that was uh, 
dangerous or a real trick thing. You know, occasionally someone had to fall off, but that was less about the horse and more about the stunt rider. I do remember one incident with, um, in the episode, The Gypsies. The Gypsies travel in a large kind of covered wagon caravan pulled by two large horses. When they came through the entrance between these two posts and fences at the Baldwin's house, whoever was driving it first, I don't remember if it was, if it was a, a double or if it really was the actor, they got a little too close with that wagon to the post and knocked that post down. It was not a solid post. It was a, it was a prop post. So it was, you know, made with some sort of, you know, lightweight material that could be moved around as needed. And they just knocked that thing down. In this, in the actual episode, in this shot here, you see that they cleared it fine. Uh, but the, uh, the mishap did make our blooper reel at Christmas that year. <laughs> when the wranglers or trainers would bring animals to the set, sometimes they would bring additional animals that they had in training. I remember one time when a trainer brought a small porcupine, a young porcupine that was, I guess, being trained. And this porcupine would follow your heel as long as you were close enough for the porcupine to see it, sense it, whatever it was, it would keep walking with you and follow you. If you got too far ahead, the little porcupine would stop and then it would wait until you came back and it could get attached to your heel again and then it would follow you again. It was the cutest thing. And we all, a number of us, the kids, had a chance to uh, to experiment and play with that and, and, and lead the porcupine places. So I thought it was very nice of the trainer to let us interact in that way with it. There are no doubt many other episodes that included animals that I haven't spoken about here. As I touch on some of those episodes, I will try to include anything I might remember about working with those particular animals. But for now, there you are with this episode of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons the animals. I hope you've enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.